We wore black uniforms because black wasn't the color, it was an attitude. Miller gonna take it, and there he is! Touchdown, rising right down the middle! Everybody watched us, everybody wanted to be with us and party with us. We was the show. Over the last 30 years, how many teams can say that? That's what made that 91 team so special. Right. He falls on the ground, he goes, Jerry, they got me! <laughs> Welcome to the 30th anniversary special of the 1991 Atlanta Falcons, also known as the rudest team in no NFL history. Never <laughs> <laughs> call you rude, Jesse. Never, man, never. Nasty. Never called you, you rude. Gotta learn. We're not rude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chris Rim, and I'm joined by Coach Jerry Glanville, right receiver Michael Haynes, linebacker Jesse Tuggle, defensive end Robert Lyles, and quarterback Chris Miller. We're gonna check out a video to recap the team before we get started. You got to give Atlanta a lot of credit. You oh, know, they, they play a different style of football, but boy, they get it. They play. That guy's a hell of a coach. They too. play. They play. You know, oh, I know all about. Yeah, that. you know him. Yeah. No, he's a good. You know, they live on the edge, but they play yeah. hard. And they don't. They don't. They just don't talk about what they're going to do. That's what they do. You know, that's right. they, that's right. Everybody their, knows it. I went in their locker room yesterday. You couldn't believe the racket oh, noise. <laughs> <laughs> Going to throw a lead pattern in the corner, and it is touchdown right in the corner. Man, oh, man, yeah. what an answer. They fight. Touchdown! 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 Oh, my gosh. That couldn't have happened. Ungodly. It's was so exciting for everybody to watch our show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Car 54. Yes. <laughs> your son did that. that. Yeah. Your son did that. Yeah, it's a fine Falcon right here, baby. That's where I got it from. Absolutely. Car, that, that brought back a lot of memories. Yeah. Car 54. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what, do you, what do you remember about walking out on the field like that in, at the end? Oh, man. We was a show. Everybody wanted to, everybody watched us. Everybody wanted to be with us and party with us. We're on our way. We're on our way. We just... Uh, uh, beat them at home, I think, for the second time. I yeah, and, uh, you know that was the that was the first time the Falcons had been in the playoffs play in a off. very long time. Like Eleven so, years, yeah, 12 years. A long time. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. So everybody was excited, man. And then you know our first playoff game as a, I know for us as a group. So, yeah, yeah. And we were just out, we were just having fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and already that, been in the league five years, and we haven't had a winning season yet. Yeah. But they win the playoffs in New Orleans, and then that ball was up in the air that Chris said you threw, and then Michael Haynes came down with it. He got lit. And I'm on the sideline <laughs> watching it, thinking uh, he got lit. Okay, we're gonna win this game here. This is my right. first playoff win, you know, as a professional. So it was a real big day for me too. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, and let's before we get into that, let's take a video. We have another video to take a look at just the the show and the, the culture that that y'all had. Let's take a look at it. Uh oh. <clears throat> People can't even stand on the sideline celebrities in the NFL because of us in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> we had an all-star cast on the sidelines doing games, man. The distractions and everything else that Jerry Glanville causes, he's bringing in MC Hammer. They're waiting his arrival now to surprise the team. He's going to lead them in the pregame prayer and also with a little bit of rap. <laughs> You are in the locker room. What is the mood in there right now? Oh, it's the same as usual. They all fired up and ready to go. Too legit to quit. Hey, good seeing you, Hammer. All right, get your ticket at the door. <laughs> it caught on, and, and, and till this day, all Atlanta wants, man, is a winner or someone with a winning characteristic, a winning trait, a winning DNA. Atlanta is a city that's ready and willing to embrace and support you in a multiplicity of ways. Yeah. <laughs> mm, gave me chills, man. Right. I know, right? <laughs> chills. Think about that, man. That, All that the celebrities we had on the sideline, that's cool. You know, I think MC Hammer was just, you know, he was one of the biggest celebrities at, at the time in the country. Yeah. To come to our sideline, he was getting a kick out of that. But him and Dion had this thing going on where 
Dion was a primetime superstar, and obviously MC Hammer was too. So they they blended right together. And then Dion came to me and said, uh, "MC Hammer wants to talk to the team before the game. He wants to talk to the team. <laughs> right. He wants to give the team talk." I said, you know me. Yeah. Let him have it. The news. His talks are a whole lot better than his talks. Have <laughs> and then we went out to San Francisco a month later or so. Y- y'all don't remember? We went to the airport. And there was Evander Holyfield. Yep, yep. That's right. And he got on the plane and nobody invited him. Right. <laughs> and he came to me. I'll he he says, I want to talk to the team. <laughs> Hell. Let him go, too. <laughs> you can have my seat. Yeah. That's so right. He got up to talk to the team, and this is what we heard. <laughs> <laughs> Not one word was said. I said, man, this could go on for hours. <laughs> So I finally said, how about that? Hey, <laughs> 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 oh, Jerry, the killer, you got to think about this right here, though. This is 1991. Yeah. We got the world heavyweight champion world heavyweight right here champion. in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. man. On our sidelines. That's right. On our bus. Yeah. That's right. On, on our, our plane. plane. Uh-huh. On the plane. And oh, you I mean, how many teams, can, when you look around over the last 30 years, how many teams can say that? Nobody. 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 I mean, you Nobody. Think about that's it. what you make think. that 91 team so special. You're right. You think about it. So. Uh, Hammer traveled with us. Yeah. Evander traveled with us. Yeah. We had Travis Trent show up all the time. Yeah. We had James Brown come Brown. show up. <laughs> James. 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 So we yeah. are, hey, we're, 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 we're out in Sewanee in the <laughs> locker room, right? And I'm sitting down, and James Brown is sitting right next to me in the I'm locker, good. and he's got his assistant, and James doesn't take off his own shoes, right? Right. <laughs> so he raises his foot up. His guy takes his shoes off, puts a nice pair of turf shoes on, <laughs> right. and, you know, ties up his laces. We go out to the field, and I, right. I, I'm sitting, I'm next to the Godfather of Soul. I'm from Eugene, Oregon, right. sitting next to the Godfather of Soul, <laughs> teach him how to take a snap from under center and run a toss play to Mike Rogier, a Heisman Trophy winner. Yeah. That's crazy. Just you didn't happen. It just don't happen. Yeah. So it just don't happen. Yeah. <laughs> Dennis Hopper, Dennis Hopper's hanging out with us. Jerry oh Jeff Walker, goodness. Travis. Tritt. Oh, Jerry Jeff yeah. Walker came down and married the Redskin, mm-hmm. and wrote a song about y'all. He was so talented. <laughs> he wrote a song about y'all that uh, next, next thing you know, everybody wanted a piece of that song. Did you get to sing on that record? No, I didn't. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> because if I did, um, I would definitely do not play it right now. I have a terrible voice. <laughs> what, what, what were those? Because I know the, the pregame locker room was madness, right? What yeah. was that? What was that like being in the pregame locker room that was similar to a nightclub, right? <laughs> hey, I, I will say this right here. Hey, Chris, 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 you got to understand this. It man. was your soundtrack. It was your soundtrack. Chris, listen to this right here, man. Seriously. In the NFL, Everybody want to get serious. Right for a game, you can go to out of 31 teams, how many teams there are now, you can go and listen, and it's quiet. Our locker room was never quiet. Uh, Pre-game, when you come in there, music, it was blasting. Oh I mean, anything from country music to rap music, rock, rock and, and roll, roll, everything. And everybody loved it, man. Yeah. It, it, it motivated folks, everybody. Cool thing, you have folks dancing and doing their thing, getting comfortable, getting ready for the game. And nobody's uptight. You know, all the stars they, hanging out. All the stars dances. hanging out, walking through the locker room. Then you have folks like me who I put my headphones on and be sitting in the corner trying to get ready. <laughs> and the music just going and going. And it was so much fun. And I mean, yeah. you couldn't ask for a better scene. than, than It and wouldn't, just it in wouldn't fly in today's NFL And that's security. before the game. It, so. it wouldn't. Yeah. But not the game. It How about imagine once game, we it would win or worse, <laughs> and it's, reporters, it's that times three. <laughs> hey, listen, Chris, after the game, reporters would come in, and they're like, can someone turn on the music? We can't even ask the guys questions. <laughs> I mean, it would be that loud. Oh, wow. Jerry said, oh, no one touched the, the music. music. <laughs> and, right. and the music played the entire time. The music um, was sacred, for sure, It was sure, sacred. Man. It, was it was sacred. sacred. And y'all, awesome. And, we had big, big boom boxes. We're the only team when we got on the airplane. We, had, we traveled. Right? <laughs> I know. We <laughs> traveled. Case, man. <laughs> traveled them circuits. And still to, to this day, people talk about this team as, as one of the, the teams in Falcons history that was most connected to the city in terms of the, the way you guys played, the way you were boastful and, and brash. And like I, I'm talking about earlier, Dion had to, you know, look wet, but it's but it's dry, it's very curly. <laughs> why, why do y'all think y'all connected so much with, with the city of Atlanta? When I left the city, and I hadn't used the word, but you all know the word. People said, that team started swag. Mm-hmm. And I never thought about that because I never thought about swag. I just thought we had, we wore black uniforms because black wasn't the color, it was an attitude. Right. Well, that attitude got to the swag, and I think Atlanta loved the swag of the way they played. Uh, you know, we didn't throw a frickin' four-yard route. And <laughs> right, we didn't, right, right. We didn't right, go right. three plays without a blitz. Right. And, and so it, it wasn't what people watch today. Today, 
It's like mm-hmm. going to a Baptist sermon. Nothing's <laughs> happening, you know? Uh, we were on fire. Yeah, all, you know, the time. all the I'll time. Tell you, I think he's right with the swag thing. I mean, the city was on the rise with the music industry starting to get big. Uh, the Braves had just won their... Uh, yeah. They had just started becoming the Braves that they are now. And, you know, everything was missing but the football team. And then, right. uh, like he said, when that swag started, it started hitting us in, 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 in the media, and then it poured onto the field. And I mean, we had Dion Primetime, we had Showtime and Andre Rising with Jerry Glanville, who was a big character of himself. <laughs> and I mean, it just poured into it. And then, and then we were winning games. Right. I mean, you win games, the media gonna follow, especially with all the other stuff that's going on around us. I think, yeah, it was, sure. I think it was all inclusive right. too, with all right. different, sort, different right. walks of life. Everybody could identify with, with the Falcons, what we were doing. Right. It was new, it was fresh. Attitude. Didn't matter if you were West Coast redneck country person or whatever. I mean, everybody could could identify with different walks of life and it made it so unique. And everybody had fun. You see on these videos, everybody's rocking and you don't see that all the time at NFL the games. I mean. And it, we wasn't, just, it wasn't just that we were the most exciting Falcon team. We were the most exciting team, team. in the NFL. Yeah. Exactly. Which was really cool. Yeah. <laughs> for, so for me, it was, it was different because that's where we were in Houston. You know, we came here, for me, when I got here, first year, we didn't win. The, we we lost the co- close games. Right. That next year we won those games. Right. So the five that we lost the year before, we won them. Right. So now we had his attitude and his spirit and just who he was leading the way. It opened up all that for when we got here because everything we did was attack. Right. We was having fun. We was uh, working hard. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And every and like we had people from all genres of of life, you know, from country western to rap to to blues to everything else to where uh, we were able to reach everybody within the community. And you let us be ourselves. That was the coolest thing. We all all can be ourselves, and you encouraged it, and it just came out. And And that brought the swag on. What's what's interesting about being yourselves, offensive lineman, comes up to me 20 years later at the Super Bowl, he goes, nobody had the fun that we had, but I now realize nobody worked as hard as we did or were more prepared than we He goes, when we didn't have you, we weren't prepared for all that stuff that was going to happen. He says, so people thought we were having fun, which we were, but you all didn't know you were working harder than anybody. <laughs> Who else played nine on seven live? Uh, yeah, <laughs> for people don't know, when you practice, you know, today you practice, you don't have the gear on. You know, we practiced the entire season with the gear. Three full oh, weeks. Nine three full weeks. Of the yeah. Yeah. Live, like a full scrimmage. You know, and, but that made me better because I, I was the NFL leading tackler that year. Yeah. And Jerry, thanks for that. And, uh, <laughs> no, and, thank uh, you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> But he brought a lot out of the city and brought a lot out of yeah. us because Community. before, you know, our team was, you know, obviously the, you know, the Falcons color, you know, you got white, red, and black, and we wore those colors. You know, red was home and white was on the road, but we was back in black when Jerry came. It was yeah. an attitude thing, not more, attitude. more so a jersey and the helmet change. It was an attitude change. That's what it was. And I think the attitude change what brought us from the year before your first year, we went 5-11 and 11 to – Going ten and six, and eventually going to New Orleans, and winning, winning, World, winning our first playoff yeah. game in eleven in, years. In man. eleven years, yeah. and I think that carried on to this day. Yeah. You know, right. it helped change the culture of how the average fans in Atlanta view the, the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, and let's and let's let's stick let's stick let's stick with with Jerry with, with Coach Glenville actually because I know he changed his team and he led this unique crazy group of group of guys. And let's let's watch a video about Jerry that we that we made up. Anybody scared? <laughs> I've been a head coach six years, uh, and that's why I take time to have some fun. That's why you don't take yourself too seriously because nobody else is. Uh, I think the worst thing to have to see is you think, boy, this is it, I made it, and here I am, and don't have fun along the way. And one thing about Atlanta, they're like their eccentric coach, Jerry Glanville. They live on the edge. Jerry says, we make people nervous. You don't know what you're going to get with the Atlanta Falcons. Jerry Glanville, he is unique. There is no question about it. He was telling me he has caused so much distraction for his team during the regular season that when you get to the distractions of the playoffs, his club is ready and very loose. 50% of them usually like me and 50% can't stand you. And that sort of follows with the fans and the cities. And, the, you know, my, my old rule is uh, if you're hanging 50-50, you, you, you're better than most folks. Which you wait your entire adult life for, really. 
get the feeling running down your arms, into your fingers. This is what laughs all about. <laughs> wow. I paid that guy fifty dollars, but then, yeah. <laughs> none of that was true. This whole show doesn't have to be the truth, does it? Yeah, it got to be the truth. Oh man, that is the show. show. Good yeah. night, everybody. Say, it's, it's funny because we we adopted his attitude. He came in nineteen ninety, and he started to change the culture from day one. And that ninety one team reflects all that he was. I mean, we went to black. We went to eleven men on. I mean. You don't see 11 people on tackle anymore. You <laughs> no, got exactly. guys diving over the top just to get on the tackle. Yeah. And that's because he, he set a new standard for us. And when you set a new standard in, in, in an organization, like a football team, man, everybody who, who buy in, it changes the whole culture of the I team. Yeah. And, the, and one of the ways you changed was with the, the red gun offense and, you, you know, no, no routes under 22 yards. And, <laughs> and start, I, think, I, think the quote, I think the quote you said was uh, – You'd rather take a something like you'd rather take a fork in the eye than watch Bill Walsh stick. off a stick. <laughs> I'd rather take a stick in the eye. Hey, we all laugh. You know the, these offenses. In fact, somebody late yesterday. What did they have? Sixteen play. Three sixteen. Yeah, play three drives. sixteen play drives, drives and no touchdowns. These two, I give them one play, we got to have a score. <laughs> they got one shot, we went downtown. And I watch these four or five yard plays, and, and they know my. If we want four or five yards, we're going to turn around and hand it to Mike Rozier. We're not going to go through all this pass protection, make all these freaking calls, <laughs> and throw it. And he didn't like to throw anything that wasn't about 35 yards. <laughs> but he was the most accurate deep ball thrower. Yeah. And when you got a guy that can throw it that deep, and then you have the fastest guy yeah. playing for you, <laughs> we got to be surprised. And while those two were sitting down, while they didn't sit there, They'd watch these two guys try to kill you. <laughs> who, who wouldn't go to that game? Who wouldn't love those people? Yeah, it, was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. A lot of action, man. A lot yeah. of action. And your defense, what, the, the pride in you, they called you all the, the black wave, right? The black the, wave. The, the we, black had, wave. No, we had the red gun on offense and the black, and the black wave on defense. <laughs> yeah, we tried to make it happen. <laughs> how, yeah, how? It, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Defense was a lot of fun for us. Special you know, teams. Had, special teams special, also. Don't forget the special don't, teams. Man. Hey, look, special team captain, defensive captain right here. And yep. we made it happen. Yeah. And yeah. we made it happen. And, um. And I like special teams too because as a veteran player, normally you don't play a lot of special teams. Yeah. I was on special team for 12 years, okay? <laughs> so wow. you don't, you don't yeah, even see that anymore. Wow. All right, That's so. what you get for not getting get drafted. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> you get drafted, you don't cover the kicks. <laughs> I'm like, hey, man, I'm the NFL leading tackler. How am I still on special teams? Yeah. I have no idea, but I was on special was teams. Too, right? the, and we'll start a yeah. full time starter. Yeah. So, but we took, a, we took a lot of pride, man. You know, yeah. guys like myself and Scott Case and. There's so many guys. Don't forget guys, Joe Fishback. Joe, Joe Fishback. Hey, listen, y'all know Albert, hey, look, Albert, Albert, Albert Shelley. Albert, Albert Shelley. Oh, Albert, Albert made Pro Bowl, right? Leather yeah. jacket, Albert hey, Shelley. Man, we had a ton of guys. And we had a baseball player on our team, Brian Jordan. Brian, but, with two but baseball our players. Coach, well, Deion, our coach Deion never baseball. called him by his real name. He called him baseball. <laughs> hey, baseball. And he left after baseball. <laughs> I'll tell you, he pretty much had a nickname for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody had a nickname. So Brian Joe cool. would ride Brian ever be known as baseball. baseball. <laughs> yeah. He made it then, man. Yeah, and, and, he made it. and this, this thing you with the celebrities, you, you always left tickets for Elvis. What, what was this about? And James Dean, we, right? we didn't do that here. In fact, uh, we did that when we were in Houston, I think that okay. was. In Atlanta, it's terrible because I went out to the Falcon building. And they have a corner, Hall of Shame for each guy. And, and <laughs> s sitting under Jerry Glanville's Hall of Shame, it says he left tickets for Elvis every time he was in. We never did it one time. Uh, but why ruin a good story? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If we're allowed two more lives, hell, we'll go along. We'll go with the Elvis. So we like it. So it's not true? No. We did that in, uh, we, we did that in uh, Houston. We were playing true, the New England here. Patriots in uh, uh, Memphis preseason game, mm -hmm. and the halftime was dedicated to Elvis. Well, June Jones and me are driving into work, and on the radio, the guy says, they spotted Elvis in Michigan at a Burger King. <laughs> and June, June gets me in trouble. He goes, Jerry, leave him two tickets. <laughs> and then, that had a life of its own. That took uh, off. That's that all we yeah. Hey, Chris, I got to add, one, one of the coolest things about, you know, you watch the NFL nowadays, and when the defense is on the field, the offensive guys are sitting on a bench, right? Yeah. They're looking through their, their computer, whatever it is, on the sideline, and they got a hat on and they're chilling. Our team was so exciting to watch. When, when our defense was out there, we would be standing stand right on the watch. sideline exactly. watching our defense work because we knew something was going to go down that was going to be <laughs> special or exciting because you had Jesse the Hammer Tuggle, Scott Case, 
uh, primetime Deion Sanders. You know, I mean, we had playmakers out there, and it was like when we were on offense, they weren't sitting down. No. Because oh, it was so watch. fun to watch and each that, other operate, you know. And that's what made us a great team. Yeah. Because not only were we watching, we cheering for them. We win. enjoyed it. I mean, yeah. we enjoyed watching the other, our, our defensive play because we knew that they were trying to get 11 guys Something to the ball. big was going to go down. <laughs> yes. But I got to so, say this about Jess. Whenever you guys scored in one play, he goes, Coach, we didn't get much break. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> we need a little longer break to have that next the disadvantage, <laughs> the disadvantage of playing defense for a team that that particular kind of running the red gun was they score too fast. Like, we'll be on, we'll be on the sideline like, hey, man, I just got – I just been just swallowing the one, one cup of water, okay? It's time to go back on the field again. Yeah. And, uh, but other than that, it was a good problem to have. Yeah. And, and the way y'all played, it made a lot of people upset. And even the way the way y'all approached – the game with from the swagger to the dancing oh, yeah. to the throwing the, it was different throwing man the ball. Yeah, yeah but we were having fun man. Right. you know yeah. and I, I always i said like this i mean there's two things that they can do they can either get over they don't <laughs> either way i don't <laughs> but, care but so remember, I mean, yeah. and that's the attitude we had that's the way we play we went out and played the way we wanted to play and, what, and we went out and had fun doing it yeah and what we did it, we either made them better or we made them quit that's it. You're going to fight or you're going to go home like yeah. a little punk. Yeah. And, and, and I was going to say, the talked team talked about us. Huh? The team talked about us. But when yeah. people talk about you, that means a lot. I mean, yeah. you must be impressing them in some type of way. Yeah. So they knew when we came to town, we were strictly business. But we bring a lot of fun with us, too. But we, we come in the way no matter what. Home. And I can remember many, many times, that video would come in. He'd say, I'll give him credit. I give him credit. They've hung in there for a half. Yeah. <laughs> but he says, Jesse, keep hitting him in the box. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, they will fold. They will fold. fold. That's right. And he'd say, you got to give him credit. They hung for a little while. Absolutely. <laughs> now, I was going to say because people disliked you so much that you were telling you were telling a story about how you went to that game in Houston. And you had yep. to wear a bulletproof vest. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey, nobody would stand by his <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean, wherever you, Jerry was, we knew he had a bulletproof vest. We were the at best. the other end of can the can you, can, you can, you explain, can you explain why you had to wear a bulletproof vest? Some, some guy would call up, make a phone call, and they had protocol. We had, you know, we had security. And the protocol was you had to do this. If I had on that high plains drifter jacket, they all knew they were talking to me. Right? And, and I'll never forget, June, June was a great coach with us, and he wouldn't come near me. We're in Cleveland. And uh, I said, June, he goes, no, no, just stay there. Talk to me on the phone. So now we're going to win the game. So now June, there's about a minute left, comes up and stands next to me. Out of the upper deck comes an apple. Hits June right in the back. He falls on the ground. And he goes, Jerry, they got me. <laughs> There's no way you got an apple. <laughs> you know, it was an apple. It was an apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was frozen. Yeah. It was frozen. <laughs> snowball. Yeah, and you and there was a preseason game that they, that we were talking about where you said you had 240 yards and, and 240 yards. I had uh, a couple of catches. Now this is preseason. <laughs> now, we New started, contract. Right, let, let, New contract. Listen, here, yeah. So we're in a preseason game. And this is against his old team. He wanted to destroy them. <laughs> now, normally, in Houston, normally in we Houston. play a preseason game. The, the, the starting offense, they go maybe the first series, then they're done with the game. That's it. Not in Houston. No. He no. wanted to beat them so bad. So this is third quarter. I had 240 yards. I had three touchdowns, <laughs> and he was still calling. He was still pushing the gas. He was still telling, throwing no, deep. No. <laughs> and I'm like, this preseason, man. We should be out, ready to go. But he was still, he's like, I want to beat them 100. If I can beat them I by 100, it's 300 yards. Yeah. Four touchdowns, three to him. And I got a new contract after that. You got game. a new contract. After a preseason game. After a preseason game. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're buying dinner tonight. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I'm on and a for all, all the folks in Houston, you wonder why he had on the bulletproof vest. Because he right. wanted to destroy them. Yeah. So. so how was, for you, Jesse, how was Jerry different from other coaches you had? What made him so like? Oh, don't ask him that. I'll, I'll <laughs> never get a job. Okay, let me think this of will a, end my career. Uh, <laughs> let me see. He, was, he got a few adjectives for you, Jerry, but he's a, very outspoken. <laughs> but obviously, we see that. Yeah. But most of all, he was, a, he was a guy that really cared about the players, I think. And also, mm -hmm. he brought that winning mentality, but he did it in a fun way. You know, I played for a lot of different head coaches, but there was nobody like Jerry. Nobody. He made it fun for us when we traveled. You know, we'll go to different places, different museums, different cities. We just did stuff together. And, um, and we talked about how the locker room were. It was that way of practice. You know, he kept it fun, but he also, you know, you knew, you knew not to cross Jerry. I mean, we're going to do it, but we're going to do it the right way. And in the, in the right way, you're going you're gonna to bust your butt. You're going to work hard. 
and then you're going to have fun afterwards. But it wasn't no shortcut in between. Because in shortcuts, you, don't, you can't win anyways. So it's hard work that will take you over the hump. And that man right there showed us the way how to do it. And hey, I appreciate what that. What other team took your team picture? In front of the Iwo Jima statue. That's what we're talking about. Listen, <laughs> that's our team picture. Yes. We used to sit, we, if we went to, say, tell, Missouri. Tell say story. we go to Missouri. We're going to tell that story. Yeah. We're going to take We're going to the arch. Yeah. We go to D.C., we're going to the Washington Monument. Wherever we went, they had like something, I mean, as a team, before we go to the hotel, right? We're right. on a team yeah, bus. Absolutely. And nobody we're gonna knew stop. where we were going. And, all, and hey, no one ever knew The other knew thing it. is it all no depends on what bus she was on. That's right. What's that? What's that? We had a bus for fighting and a bus for not fighting. Y'all had a bus for fighting? Oh, yeah. If you want to get in the fight with somebody, you got on the second bus. Wait, so the second bus. I got to tell this story. There's two stories I'm going to tell. Number one, before the 91 season, we go down to Fat Tuesdays, right? And Fat Tuesdays where they have the the dryer's full of different type of liquor and juices and stuff like that. All the daiquiris, so, yeah. Yeah, daiquiris and the whole deal. So we go down to Fat Tuesdays. Fat Tuesdays on Fridays. Fat Tuesdays on Fridays, that's, that's, Tuesday Friday. Friday. so that's it. We took two buses down there. We all get, we all get liquored up pretty good. You know? Whole team. Got, whole team. Go. Whole now, you got to understand, this was mandatory. Mm -hmm. oh, you yeah. had to uh, You had to go. You had to go. When was this? Preseason. Preseason, yeah, preseason. You had to go. Tell them what happened, Chris. So anyways, there's two buses, right? And the first bus is maybe some more mellow folks. And the second bus, John Ray. He's on there and some other dudes, one of our line <laughs> wow. from Idaho, Montana. So there were some fights. There were some fisticuffs that went down on the second bus. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Andre Risen and I missed the buses back. We're walking down downtown Buckhead. Dre's got like three drinks from Fat Tuesdays on his chest. <laughs> I'm double fisted with right. two. We're going out clubbing all night long. We roll in in a taxi cab about 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. And he's loving the fact that we weren't there, that we missed it, that we showed up. <laughs> but he encouraged it. I mean, it was unique. He encouraged it. it was One fun. thing about Fat, fun. fat and Tuesdays. And it was preseason. And that was preseason. And, and the next day's practice was 7 a.m. Oh, it was, yeah, it was. <laughs> Didn't care what you did at Fat Tuesdays. We were hitting you at 7 a.m. Yeah, yeah. It was the, awesome. The other story I got to tell, we go to D.C. to play in the divisional round, and, and uh, Washington ended up winning the Super Bowl that year. And so we get there, and, and it's sleeting and cold oh, and nasty, and it was the worst yeah. weather game I ever played in that next Sunday. So we fly in, and we, we all want to go to the hotel. It's cold, and Jamie Dukes and Houston Hoover, a couple of our linemen, they got fur coats on, and Albert Shelley has his leather on and everything. <laughs> and so we're out there standing. We go to the Washington Monument, uh, and the Vietnam Monument, then the Hiroshima yep. Monument. The Vietnam Monument. And Leslie Visser and CBS and the whole crew's out there doing a film story on us, and we're all standing in front of there taking a team picture. It's sleeting, it's cold, it's raining, we're freezing our butts off, saying, hey, man, can we get back to the hotel? But you taught us, you took us to some history, yep. which was a national story covered by Leslie Visser, CBS, and those are the things that made you unique well, and special. I agree. We, we had got a great off time. the bus. Yeah. We are going to play in Washington, and you guys probably were not. We get off the bus at the Vietnam Wall, yeah. and there's veterans in wheelchairs mm -hmm. from Chicago. Now, no, we don't tell anybody where we're going. And I said to the veteran, he goes, we're all waiting here for your Falcon team. Mm -hmm. And I goes, how in the hell did you know we were coming? And the Vietnam vet from, looked at me and goes, because you're the Falcons. Awesome. I knew you'd be yeah. here. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And that, there's yeah. never been a team like that. 1991 Atlanta Falcons, California State Champs. We had beaten every single team on the West Coast. You got all these guys down there. It's, it's, it's a free fall. Down in the corner, batted. They fight. Touchdown! 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 Oh, my gosh. That couldn't have happened.